about it. So we will um, talk about uh, some of the basic and uh, networking in a virtual infrastructure. Um, let me find out my uh, presentation. Building lab is done. Network protocol. International organization, consortium, communication. Just a little bit high. So, um, lecture networking. Okay, this is one. Okay, I tapped them. Okay, I got my um, presentation. This is a uh, this is VMware networking. Good. This is what I wanted. Okay. All right. So let's talk about networking. Um, every computer, uh, let me start recording here. Uh, okay, so recording started. Let me try to start here, uh, down here. Hey, sir, I'm going to ask you Okay, let me admit uh, some students. Okay. Okay. Khadija. Okay. Okay. I'm scared. Okay. Rahmat. Okay. Let's get started. So VMware networking. VMware networking. We're gonna talk about today. Um. Uh, uh. It's basic VMware networking, but it's basically uh all the internet uh works. So we are building a small environment that. Uh, represents the whole internet. So if we can build a lab environment can have two computers talk to each other, you're basically understanding this whole, uh, it's, it's how internet works, um, regardless where the location is. Uh, if you understand the protocol, if you understand how they communicate each other, you will understand how all the internet works. It's just, it's more complicated, but the basic, um, the basic communication is um, the same. So let's say you have a computer, uh, let's say you have a computer, the basic um, communication for computer is, oh, wait, hold. <laughs> so basically, uh, the very basic uh, communication for computer is you have a computer here, and you have a computer here. So in, in a very basic uh, environment, you just have a cable connect, and then that's a basic uh, connection. You can talk to two computers, can talk to each other. Um, you can use a cross cable or some kind of cable, but uh, that that is the basic uh, communication. You have a computer here and you can computer here. You just use uh, connection, wired connection or Wi-Fi connection. You can talk to each other. Now, let's say um, you have a computer here and let's say you have a computer here in USA and you have a computer here in Turkey. So what is the way to get them to talk to each other? Are we gonna run a cable from here, cross the ocean, cross the ocean and connect the cable to your home, right? That's how you connect it. This is like, uh, this is ocean or shit. So 
you connect the cable. Let's use different color for the cable here. You connect um, you connect cable cross ocean under his knees and it cuts through here and go to Turkey. So that's another way to connect two computers can talk to each other. So it basically it's the guards of the distance as long as you have a medium to connect two side, you can talk to each other. It could connect through the satellite. It could connect through land. It could connect through the fiber cable. It could connect through different means of communication. Regardless of communication, if you wanted two points, uh, two computer and two points to communicate, you had to have some kind of medium that connects each other. So in, in a very complicated way, uh, in a very complicated way, you have a computer this side and you have a computer on this side. You had to, uh, in order to connect here, so there's a lot of hoops to jump through. We call the routing, which is uh, where the uh, like router comes in. It could be uh, from here, you from your host home home to your uh, internet service provider, which is give you um, internet provider. It's a real cable or Wi-Fi. Your telephone uses Wi-Fi. This could be a cable or it could be um, signal, Wi-Fi signal. Connect to internet service provider. Let's say uh, if you have a, a Wi-Fi connection, let's, let's say it, to the telecom, right? There must be a service that provide you to connect from your phone, your home to uh, your internet service provider. And internet service provider, internet provider, sorry, this, uh, there is a, so this will be internet provider, or you just say Turk Telco, because this is one of the, uh, uh, this is Turkey. This is my company here is USA. This is uh, Verizon, which is just like Turk Telecom, one of the biggest uh, ISPs. Oh, this is Verizon. So my service provider is Verizon. So I connect uh, fiber. My connection is fiber, connect to the Verizon and in order to me communicate you, which is you watching my presentation, basically that means we are connected in, in, in some case, some ways. Uh, we don't know what's uh, uh, behind the scene. So this is basically how it works. So you have a lot of router between us. So you have another router here, another router here, another router here. So. Uh, this might be in New York, and then this might be in Germany. So we don't know. We really don't know. So it's a connect this guy's, this guy's connected this guy, this guy's connected this guy, and then this guy connected to your home, or this guy connected this guy, this guy connected this guy, or this connected this one, this one. Depending on the the traffic, they have a very uh, sufficient, very complicated uh, routing. Uh, protocol just like airline, just like you coming from from your home. Let's say you, your home is in uh, let's say in, in Istanbul. Uh, uh, let's say. you can go from your home to uh, your school. There is many road you can take. You can take a taxi. Uh, you can take. You can walk if it's close. Or if you can take a train, uh, you. You wake up and then if you see the train is not working, so you had to take a bus or if bus, bus is too crowded, you can take the road. So this is how exactly how uh, the whole internet works. So you connect to your internet service provider, that service provider will have a road 
to connect to, to you come your uh, another side of the world and then that connected to you this one so we you only know this one but we don't know what's going on inside this is like a, out of your control there is many complicated routing protocol so uh, to be summary you have, you have a two point that wants to communicate you can the simplest form is one direct cable if you uh, communicate farther distance cd to cd school to school continent to continents and then you have a very complicated uh, routing protocol that uses it so what we try to do today, we will uh, understanding first uh, what the basic requirements for um, to have a, two computers to uh, talk to each other. And we're gonna build small lab. Uh, if the new students, if you have not uh, downloaded uh, VMware or VirtualBox, um, Please do download it. Uh, we, uh, if you want to join us, as um, uh, yes. I send you the link on the chat, and it, if you can, you also can download the Kali. Uh, can somebody uh, put the Kali download link on the chat room so uh, your friends, classmates can download? Um, please put in the chat about uh, VMware or virtual box box. Uh, download and then uh, VMware uh, the Kali download link. And um, um, if you can uh, download uh, the Windows uh, 10 Enterprise I sent last week, please do uh, post it on the chat. Thank you. So that's what we do today. So we're going to learn very, very basics, which is required to communicate two side communicate each other. This becomes very important on uh, learning uh, cybersecurity or any in anything general that related to computer. If you don't know how two computers communicate, um, it is very hard to understand the whole uh, internet, even your home networking. So that being said, uh, let's get started. Um, we will. Um, Is my screen clear for everybody? Can everybody read it? Yes. Cool. Okay. Right Good. So we're going to learn a couple terms today. This is a basically uh, uh, everything you need to know that for a computer to communicate in basic requirements. Um, we will talk about IP. We will talk about gateway. Uh, we will talk about DNS, DHCP, router, switch, uh, bridge, NAT, host only DNS. Uh, hopefully we can cover those topics in two or three, or three hours, or maybe four, maybe three hours, okay. Um, let's get started. So what is the purpose of an IP address? IP address is called internet protocol address. That's a, a it's just like your, ID, your uh, Kimlik, you have a number unique to yourself. Uh, I have you also have a your uh, that used for communicate with everywhere. So, um, official um, official meaning or official uh, definition of IP is that IP addresses are a unique identifier assigned to internet connected devices and they are required for your device to access internet so not only access to internet uh, ip is required to have a communication uh, between two devices i mean you can there's other way to communicate but in a uh, nowadays for a uh, real uh, communication you had to have ip to communicate so make sure it's like unique identifier assigned it to internet connected devices. It, it's not just computer, your phone have IP address, uh, may, uh, anything that is connected to internet or anything connected to the network uh, has a 
IP address. And they are required. This is very important. They are required for you, any device with internet. So internet is a, a communication between uh, devices. It's not just computer. It is um, like a internet things, your cell phone. There's many uh, things that are connected to internet, your uh, computer, your, uh, your gaming, your game, your TV, your um, like, in, in, especially if it's advanced uh, technology, you have a traffic lights, your traffic signal, your just temperature uh, camera, Everything is connected. It's called Internet of Devices, IoT. Every thing that is connected to internet needs an IP address. Um, okay. So, So what information does my IP reveals? Um, IP address can reveal a lot of things about you or about the uh, device owner. If you can give me your IP address, I can tell you basically where you are uh, in some cases, if uh, even in your home address, uh, your location, if you give me your cell phone number, or cell phone um, IP address, there's a, a way to find out your exact location. So it's IP address is basically your uh, shadow that uh, follow you and tell about yourself. Um, so because the IP address is uh, required to communicate and it, it is, has, um, uh, we will see later on. So. It basically, it gives you, if I know your IP address, I basically know uh, a lot thing about you. Um, advertiser, also, we use a lot of things free. Uh, basically, we exchange our information, give them our information and exchange for free services. Let's imagine that I saw you on the street. I'm a stranger. You are a stranger. Let's say I ask you, what is your name? And then you say, what is your problem? Why you ask my name? I say, oh, where do you live? I say, why you care? So who are you? And they say, oh, what do you like to do? I said, why are you asking me this? Why are you, I'm not gonna tell you, who are you? And then I say, um, who is your good friend? I said, none of your business. You again, tell me, right? Because I'm a stranger. I'm asking you on the street. And I ask you, uh, what is your, um, what, how are you feeling today? What did you eat yesterday? Where did you go yesterday? And you will get irritated and say, go F yourself. So uh, you will get irritated. So, but, we will give those information very easily without any question to all the internet service provider. So search engines, Facebook, Google, or any uh, company we use their services and without asking any question. And if they give us free uh, services. And uh, because you feel that you get those services free, but you basically you giving your information to be targeted for any purposes. It could be uh, for selling, advertising, or we don't know what purpose that information can be used or tracing or uh, doing intelligence gathering on your on you or selling you information to some entities that interested in you, where you are, where did you go? Who did you meet? What time did you meet? Who is your close friend? Uh, it's so complicated that you, there's, uh, you, if you, I know uh, some of you, you have a, 
uh, in college, you may learning some artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is going to go beyond our imagination that can sort through data and tell about yourself, the, the AI engine, when you collected all the information can tell you, you, they will know you better than you know yourself. So this is all connected to your IP. Um, not to be scared, but uh, we will talk about more um, why IP is very important in uh, social media. So, so basically what, who wants my IP? Everybody, authorities, uh, local government, uh, advertiser, social media, e-commerce, hackers, criminal, anyone who is interested for you, any reason. Why? Um, let's say you are, you log into your computer from a um, uh, store or you log in, you're looking for something on your uh, um, computer, let's say you're searching a buy a shoes on Amazon or um, I'm not sure what's the biggest commercial. I think Amazon's getting big in Turkey too. So you search Turkey, some kind of shoes and you close your browser and you search it has nothing to do with Amazon, but the same thing come keeps pops up. And then there's one and it's again, they suggest you to buy that some kind of shoes. Let's say you log into Facebook every day, you, uh, like some news, you don't like some news, you have friends, you posted what you ate yesterday, where you are, your location, you posted your, uh, even you are, uh, your username is the same. If you go to the beach or a tea house drinking tea, you have a different IP address. That IP address is registered, whoever providing you that IP address, that location. So you're basically zigzagging all the location you follow. So if I want, I am an intelligence officer. If I want to follow you, I will talk to Facebook and asking some uh, targeted advertiser. I might not advertise to you, but um, I can ask because Facebook is a fitty. They will collect all the information about your likings, your friends, your what you eat like your uh, political affiliation what is your um what is your favorite uh, person who is your not favorite person they will analyze they create a profile on you and then you basically become their um product target so if they want to put advertisement let's say let's say uh there's a candidate that you like, but some people spend a lot of money on Facebook, say, I want to change his mind. I want, uh, let's say, uh, Mr. X doesn't like, doesn't like this uh, governor, why? So can we change his mind? Okay, let's target to give him more like favorable news about this guy it, and then send a more unfavorable news to, to his opponent. So basically they can target you to uh, change your mind. It is, it is not makeup story, it is happening. Uh, it is uh, data shows that uh, if you spend a lot of time in Facebook, you basically become Facebook zombie. And the more you scroll down, they're gonna feed you more. It's like more like addiction. Um, so you more use things you like. If you like gossip, they will go through all the gossips you like, all the people who provide gossip and it, it keep feeding you what you like. Those are connected to your uh, location IP address because uh, so the IP address is where they get uh, make more money. Uh, let's say if you have a different location, if you keep changing your IP address, they cannot really connect you in some way, but if they can, but it's very limited. So new commerce, e-commerce e website also have a, um, a great um, 
using uh, IP address. So IP address is very important. That's a basic communication uh, tools for internet. Um, let's go next one. So IP address type. So you have IP address, you have uh, two types of IP address. The private IP address and the public IP address. The one we talked about previously is public IP address, which is you need to communicate with the public or internet people or anywhere. Um, there's one person coming in. So the public, you have a two types of IP address. One is public, one is private. It's like, imagine you have a, a public profile, you have a public ID and you have private ID at home. That is, you only you know that, but uh, it's like a, you have a, a street number, right? You have a street, you have your house has a street number and you have a house has address that public knows if I pass through street and I read your room number. And inside your house, you let's say you have three, house, three rooms in your house. You can make a different number in your room. Who cares? Nobody cares. So you can say, uh, this is room one. The first one's room one. Second one's room two. Third one's room three. Or vice versa. So nobody cares. And the public uh, IP address, you have no control of it. Public IP address is given to you uh, from your ISP provider. So we talked about you cannot really communicate with IP address. So where is this IP address coming from? We will talk about that. So right now, the only thing you need to understand is that you have a two types of IP address. One is public IP address, which you use. Uh, it's like your passport address. You go to travel, you go to different places, you go to um, uh, anything that authorized in public domain. So the whole entire country, you are the only, your passport is a very unique passport number on it. So nobody can have that number. So that's your public IP address. It can change time to time. Uh, even your passport number doesn't change, but public IP address does change uh, all the time. If you shut down your phone or computer for a day, or uh, shut down your router, actually, your main router for a day or two, they will take away that public IP address and give it to someone else. When you turn on your router, you will get different IP address. But regardless, public IP address is required to have a, a communication with the internet. So, um, next. So, okay, private IP address, public IP address. Let's talk about public IP address first. So, public IP address classification is uh, so everybody needs IP address to communicate, right? I gonna this guy doesn't have a name. Come look, look, okay. If you don't have name to join the meeting, I will remove you. So if you want to join, at least have a first name. Um, so public IP address classification. So we talk about uh, IP address. So um, if you have time, uh, just to do a um, uh, call just to, in your computer, what is my IP address? What is my IP.com? This is my IP, so my location, at least it, give, it did not give me exactly I am, but uh, it at least give me uh, my, uh, my service provider and uh, your, my IP address, that's my public IP address. This might change if I restart my router. Um, so this is my uh, communication to you right now. So if you 
maybe I'll learn about ping. But in some way, I am connecting you with this IP address. So if you have time, you can do it. So there's limited address. There's limited uh, range for IP public IP address. So uh, let's start from, uh, it start from 000 to 126. That's called class A, which is uh, the big corporation use that um, like Google, Facebook, GM, uh, financial company like American Express or uh, the big company use those uh, address. Um, and they have class B, which is kind of medium um, company uses that. Um, some company uh, like internet service provider, telecommunication company, and you have class C uh, that is for um, company use. There's no limitation that you have to use this address, but uh, you, could, you, you could get one of this uh, A class, but very rarely. But uh, let's see, what is my IP address? What class I'm, I'm 133. So uh, I'm getting 133 is in this range. So 130 starts with 133, so we don't have to go all the details. So 133 is between 128, 192. So my address is around like a class B. You might have a different. So um, uh, if you done it, uh, you can type your own, you don't have to type your IP address, but if you put the chat, what class you are in, let's see uh, if you are in the same location, or I'm not sure different uh, from the class, I can, maybe you can see different telecom company, uh, which class they use. So if you want, you can put in the chat, say which, find your uh, public IP address and then uh, see which class range you are in. Uh, just for reference, it doesn't identify where you are. We are talking about millions of IP address. So if I want to know where you are, it, it, it's easy to find out. But So this is class C. Uh, you don't have to put your uh, IP, but if you want, that's fine too. It's not really a big deal. And it, so uh, we are not uh, Facebook to use this IP. So yeah, so you see we have a class B that mean uh, there's two companies, uh, one in Turkey, one in uh, America, kind of sharing some kind of uh, range in here. So that's good. Um, so how this uh, works? Um, so it started with one, 000 to 126, 255, 255, right? That means you cannot, in, in second, every octet, we call every octet, is this every uh, number behind the dot, this is dot, this number cannot go beyond 255. You cannot have 257 here, okay? No, you cannot have 900 at the end. That's why you have limitation uh, how, how much uh, IP you can have. Uh, it's uh, the number of hosts, uh, we, cannot, we don't want, complicated talking about hosts and network. I just want you to understand uh, IP address right now. So this is how it works. So the first IP address is, uh, I get it right down here. So zero, zero, zero, zero, zero. Second one is zero. Second one is zero, zero, zero, zero, one. Zero zero zero zero two. It will goes all the way to um, zero zero zero two five five. Now the third octet and first uh, host uh, network is it's reached to two fifty five, right? Now it doesn't go to two fifty six. No two two fifty six. No does it go to 256? No, it doesn't go to 56. What instead of what it does is it can, uh, once it reached 255, it can goes to zero, zero, zero. Uh, now we can go to second one. It can go to one and then start from zero. 
and it goes to zero, zero, zero, one, uh, one, one, then. and then zero, zero, one, two, right? And then zero dot zero, zero, uh, one, three, till all the way to zero, zero, one, 255, right? And then it goes, uh, once it 255, it goes to zero, zero. I know this is a little bit boring, <laughs> but uh, be, bear with me. And you get two, and this zero. You see this uh, sequencing? So um, this is how it works, how they uh, assign the number. And it, you see when it's reached to 255, all the way to moving this direction, so, so first is zero and one, two, until it goes to 255. First, it has filled 255 here and it moves the second. Second is 255, 255. And the third, it, once it goes to 255 and second octet, it can move to uh, this one, this one. At 255, you have to and move to here. Once it reaches 126, uh, they, uh, class A is finished. Now you're moving into, uh, now you're moving into class B. It starts, you, if you look at, if you pay attention, you are uh, missing, where is 127, right? Right? Uh, 127 is a very uh, uh, special, uh, 20, 127 is a special for, uh, we call the look back IP address. Uh, that's for internal, testing for network connection, uh, network uh, uh, testing for network uh, communicate loop, we call loopback IP address. It's just for testing internally for the network devices. So, and then you start with 128 and then all the way to 191. And then same thing happened, you 190, it started with 120 instead of zero, it started 128. And they start same thing like this sequence until all the way to 55, 255, 255, 91. And this is how it works. So just understand, it's like you have a sequence, a sequence to see it. Let me close the door. Okay, thank you. Uh, so class D is, for it's not uh, used for uh, TV uh, advertising. It's called broadcasting. Uh, IP address is the uh, it's multicast. We call it multicast. So what it does is, you know, uh, when you listen to radio, watching uh, TV, you receive signal from a TV station, right? This is more like internet TV. Is a broadcast through the internet. You receive the uh, broadcasting, uh, like stock tickers, stock tickers, some of the like update, like flash updates, all those comes from one source. So this is more like broadcasting. So you have one source here, and then you have many source. So you have one uh, broadcasting uh, information and all about the receives this from one source. From this is used for the D. E is for research. So for public, you don't have access to uh, the public internet is ABC. So public IP address is ABC. You don't have access to E, D and E. So now we go to next one. We're going to go to um, uh, private IP address. Private IP address is uh, inside your private company, your private home. It is not routable on the internet. You can have all those addresses in your home if you have a uh, 5,000 computer at home or in your company, you use that, uh, you can use those company, use those IP addresses. So what it does is let me show you. So 
Uh, I think I have, uh, yeah, I have some explanation here. And so let's uh, just, just understand that this is private IP address range. It doesn't go internet. If you, uh, that mean, if you have one of those IP addresses, you cannot communicate with the internet because the way it designed it is the routing does not route those. The router was configured it's a, it's a standard, um, standard, oh no, this is okay, uh, monsieur, this guy can join it. So this is uh, not routed on the internet. So uh, you have one IP address on your modem. And let's imagine you have uh, four computers in home, right? And all those four computers have uh, inside, um, they use private IP address. And they need a one IP address to go outside. So um, we will talk about it later slide. So right now, what you need to understand is that uh, there's two IP address has two types. One is public, one is private. Public, you need it to communicate with each other on the internet. Private is just for uh, for your inside uh, computer and it communicate internally, but it can be communicated outside, but it's through the public IP address. If you're confused, don't worry. We have a uh, graph to show you how it works. So don't get panic. It's understandable. Okay. so. Uh, if you look, if you look at here, you see some uh, crossover uh, uh, co common uh, range between public IP address and the private IP address. So, if you look at here, your private IP address is kind of part of. This is part of from zero to one twenty six. Right, ten is between zero to one twenty six. And fourth octet. So 10 is between them. So they carve out this portion, assign it uh, as a private IP address. So it when you use private, when it's come to 10, they will jump to 11. They don't use uh, 10. So 10 is assigned to private. And 172 is between 128 and 191. So this is assigned for private enterprise use. So you know, the computer needs IP to communicate, right? So there's much more uh, billions of computers in the world. So if they all use a public IP address, you're not gonna have enough IP address for public IP address for each uh, things that communicate to the internal, uh, internet. So they carry out a uh, small piece in this IP address and then use that private. So this one can anybody use in their uh, organization. Let's say you have organization, you have a 500,000 computer and you only need one IP address, but uh, 5,000 uh, uh, private IP address, one public IP address, but 5,000 private IP address to communicate with other devices. So. Um, so what I mean is you have a, a router here. You have a router here and then uh, this is, uh, okay. this is internet and this is your uh, ISP router, which is connect you to internet. And you have, 5,000 computer, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, like 5,000 computer inside your company. Okay. So this is your company and it will connect through this guy to internet. So if I give 5,000 public IPRs, it is possible, but it will cost a lot of money and in taking off a lot of public spaces and people want 
to join uh you will if every company using 5000 prior public ip addresses um that will be run off very fast so what they did is they give you one uh, one IP address for whole company. And then all 5,000 computer will pass the resistor order using one IP communicate with the uh, uh, internet. This, that's why uh, using private address is very efficient to reserve a public IP address. Now, even though the private IP address version four, if you look at here, you have four octet one, um, so it's very limited, about 65, uh, the total IP address is, uh, let me forget, but we can show it. So, so you have a, um, oh, I'm trying to, so uh, one IP address can connect. So um, if 5,000 IP, if public IP, it's going to be uh, run out very fast. And that's why you have a, you have four octet, one, two, three, four. Uh, it will total IP address at least, I think like uh, 65 million or something like, but I'll find out. So now you have a version six that will have a 32 bit of address like and 32, this will extend the 32 bit, uh, which is um, uh, virtually or technically people say, we will never uh, uh, run out of IP address. Now, so who gives this IP address? Can I have just uh, have an IP address by myself? Uh, can I choose what IP address I want? Uh, answer is yes and no. If you have a big corporation, uh, you might have a good chance to buy a special IP addresses, but uh, basically, um, so whole internet is managed, internet IP address is managed for internet society. Uh, it's called uh, internet assigned numbers authority. So this is a, located in the United States. That is a, a main body that distribute those IP address. So they decide who gets what part of IP address in the world. And there are five um, regional internet register, which is, um, so uh, yeah, someone uh, posted um, total IP address, 16 million, uh, uh, around like 16 million uh, IP address. If you give one IP address to one person, uh, you basically even not enough in one uh, like a country population with uh, uh, 20 million uh, people. That's why where is a private IP address can uh, give you some uh, slack to compensate uh, the limitation of uh, v, uh, IP version four. So there's five RIRs. Uh, African region, they call AFRIC-NIC, and you have AP-NIC, Asia Pacific region. So this, this region will uh, responsible distributing uh, all this IP address to Asia Pacific region. And you have RN, North America, and uh, several Caribbean North Atlantic. And then you have uh, LACNIC, Latin America and the Caribbean, and the Sarapnip, Europe, Middle East, and part of Central Asia, where I think uh, the Turkey is uh, belong to uh, this number five. So I search. Um, Yeah, so this is a uh, organization that um, that gives you IP address. So resources. Let's see. Uh, you see, you have application to process. If you want IP address before, you have to apply them IP address, and uh, 
let's see, uh, each organization has their own. Um, so let's check uh, Europe, let's check here. So, I think this is the wrong IP address, wrong company. I think it gets a wrong link, but um, so I think you can get this from here, uh, foundation, and life number, internet governance forum events. So this is basically, if you can get through, if you do search, let's say, if you want to know about what uh, Turkey's uh, assigned number range is, uh, you can search um, uh, right in NEC. Let's copy here, let's Google it. It doesn't hurt to learn about uh, white IP range. Um, right NCC. It should be org. Okay, didn't give me stuff. Okay, let's see, regional register. Okay. They might change it. Oh, here right now. So here you can get some information. Uh, this not. It seems this not like official. It could be official. But um, yes, if you do search those kind of uh, information, it will give you uh, those information. So Turkey, Alcomedia, uh, they have some records which is given to who. Um, so you can do some Google, see um, re uh, internet registers, and you can give some a lot of data which IP is given to what company, uh, what portion is given to who. This is uh, open source intelligence, so it's your free feel free to research it. So, so public IP address is managed by those company. Um, and how about uh, private IP address? Private IP is managed by you. You manage your private IP address. Uh, you can have uh, any portion of this uh, part of, you can create your own lab, your home lab, your company. When you create, uh, you become a company engineer or uh, network engineer or system engineer, you want to set up your network. In internal network, you will use one of those IP address. So uh, the most popular IP address uh, for home environment is 192.168 because a lot of router, a lot of uh, uh, companies that makes a router makes that default is 192.168. Not because they like it, because it's easy to manage it. So you can have about 255, 255, uh, about 6,000 IP address from here, 600 to 55 to 50, uh, yeah. Let's get how many IP address you can have with this um, calculator. Two fifty five multiply two fifty five. I multiply it by two two fifty five multiply by 255 it is you can have basically by default you can have 65,025 addresses but 65,000 addresses so if you use class c as your uh, internal ip structure 
you can have 65,000 computers can communicate in your network, okay? So who manages, uh, so we talk about who gives you uh, IP address, it will, uh, so for you, for Turkey, it's a RIP, RIP NCC uh, register, which every uh, telecommunication company, internet service company, or whoever wants public use public IP address has to register their company with this organization. And this organization will give you, let's say, okay, you. so how many IP do you want? Say, I have like a 10,000 customer, I need at least uh, about 12,000 IP address. And they say, okay, uh, I have, I give you from 22 to 2200, uh, uh, give you from 22 to make it to uh, 15,000 IP address. I will give from, start from 22 to whatever number is. So they assign that number and only that company use that number. So if, if you are a separate company, let's say you have telecom, uh, Turk Telecom, and then Turk Cell, if, imagine there are two different companies, they will have different IP address range. So they are not gonna have a um, IP address range. So this is basically, it looks like a, a divided by continent to make it easy. Um, So next one is you you manage your private IP address. So you can have a very fancy uh, 10.00 IP address if you wish, 172 or 192 IP address. So public and private IP address, we just talked about a little bit. Um, do you guys, girls want to uh, 10 minutes coffee break or okay. chai break? Yeah. Let's uh, eight twenty three now. Let's come back around eight thirty. Yeah. Okay. Thank okay. you so much. Yeah. Take a break. Okay. Um, yeah. Thank you. Get something to eat.
Okay. Uh, uh, local, uh, so you have a, your local computer, which is, could be uh, many of it, but it's basically that computer behind your um, home router. This is provided by your internet service provider. This is provided by my internet service provider. And it, because we, at the beginning, I did like a very small um, uh, version of how to computer talks. So um, once you connect to your internet service provider, you don't know, or you don't really give, uh, you don't really care how it connected to your another uh, type of computer because you have no control how it's the traffic passing through. So the main concern is your uh, main router. So you have, once you connect, once you are uh, paid for services, your internet service provider or Turk Telecom or Turk Cell will install a modem. I'm not sure uh, what they call in modem. What do you call in here in, in, in Turkey, this one? We call the router, we call modem. Uh, modem is a little bit different, but most uh, time we call the router. And um, I think you guys call a router too. So, um, so you pay for internet service provider. They just give you one device that is connected to through sort of cable, connected somewhere in your neighborhood, and that uh, biggest box was connected to the internet service provider. So, you can have a, another computer here, another computer here, all connected to your router. So I have another computer here, another computer in the bedroom, another computer, your cell phone connected through the router Wi-Fi, uh, <clears throat> your iPad connected through the Wi-Fi. They all have a, a private IP address from zero. This one is two, this one is three, this one is four, this one is five, but you only have one IP address to communicate. This is you like, uh, like your, uh, law, uh, your representative. Your representative IP will talk to the world that uh, as you are. And it, your router keeps track of what internal IP address you have. So when you talk to internet, your router will, let's, you want to talk to this guy's um, 36, 34, 32, right? So you have a table, say, um, if you want to visit the google.com, your router knows the Google, go to his Google IP address. And then he knows that number two, and you have public IP address here, uh, uh, one, two, three, 45, six, seven. And then you have IP address 192, uh, 192, 68, two dot two, right? So, this guy can represent you go to talk to Google and Google say, Google thinking talk to you 123.45 and say, okay, I want to talk to you. And then uh, once Google is connected, it will transfer the traffic to you, to the local IP address. So you, your uh, local 192.168.2.2 will never go on internet. This is a re your representative that representing you talk to the internet and any traffic comes through, it will pass through to this guy because you have a table here registering whatever request you made. Maybe you're watching YouTube on the number three and then you have a number three YouTube connected to YouTube and YouTube transfer traffic to public IP address and then your router can traffic set uh, YouTube to your IP address. So that's how it works in, in general. So your um, uh, your router is basically your gateway. We will talk about gateway next slide. So your um, gateway, your connection to the world. And you can have like a uh, uh, private IP address, as much info, as private IP address as you can. So this is a difference public and private. You can have, you cannot have 192.168 here to talk to this router, no. One, if you don't have a public IP address, you will never uh, get to internet. So 
somebody has to give you a public IP address that is legitimate. Um, can I just put the 123345610 as my pi pi uh, public IP address? Yes, you can, but the company will not recognize you because this IP address has to be given to you an authorized uh, register telling, hey, I give this IP, I give him permission to go to the internet. And then you give it to your order and then you can access those internet. That's you pay for monthly fee to get those internet, to get an IP address and then uh, uh, have, the ch have a chance to uh, visit the internet. Okay, so let's go next one. So who, the public IP address given by those guys, right? So internet assigned number authority. So yeah, this is like a big company, uh, big financial institutions, they requested whoever in that location they are, they will go to their representative takes IP address. Now who gives the private IP address? So that's called a, a DHCP. Uh, it's called Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. It is a service. Uh, it's built into, it can be a standalone uh, service or it is built into your router. So once you connect to your router, uh, I want to make it bigger slide. I want to show you. Okay. So this is your router, which your uh, central device that your company, uh, your, uh, your service provider provide. <clears throat> so it has a service inside this uh, router. So what it does is once you connect it to your router, Wi-Fi authenticated, put your password or connect to the cable, your device starting uh, sending broadcast address or they say, hey, I want I want IP address, I want IP address, I want IP address, it will show it. And it, it will show to everybody can listen to that. And then only router can respond say, I have IP address, I will give you an IP address. And then if you, you might uh, notice that when you turn on your Wi-Fi, you will see all the Wi-Fi around your neighborhood, your friend's hotspot. So what that means is this guy, your hotspot was telling everybody that I am here, I, wa I want to give you IP address, who wants IP address? It's like a broadcasting its location, broadcasting its service. It's like when you go to market, every uh, vendor try to get you into their store, say, please come, please come, I have good food. This guy is a dead guy, because this guy provides food. The food for, uh, for the computer internet is IP address. So when you connect it, in order to connect to internet, it will ask for IP address. It will start uh, shouting, say, I want IP address, who is here provide IP address? Who is IP address owner here? And then this guy said, oh, I am here, I give IP address. And then they, they talk to each other. So this is uh, how they, um, how they talk to each other, clear, clear. So this is how the process goes. So it, there are four stages. The first stage, discovery stage, which DHCP client broadcasts a DHCP discover message. What that means is once you power on your phone, your laptop, your computer, it will start shouting and the air broadcast. I am alive, I am powered out, I want, an IP address, I want IP, an IP address. I am hungry, I am hungry, I am hungry, I want IP address. 
it will tell everybody, but not, not everybody can give IP address, right? And then the DSP, your router will send a message says, hey, I am the DHCP, I am the IP internal, internal IP owner. I can give you IP address if you like. It's like, hey, come to my store. I have a good food. And then it will say, okay. Um, then you have to uh, give the money, authenticate your, uh, if it's a direct cable, you don't need to authenticate, but if it's a Wi-Fi, you have to give password. I say, okay, I like your IP address. I like to get an IP address. So what do you need? And then this guy said, okay, just what is password? If it's over the wireless, but it's wired, it's give you without any authentication because when you connect this wire, it's trusted device. So you don't need authentication, but if Wi-Fi, it will ask you to authenticate. You say, okay, if you want to eat, you had to pay. And then your, your password is basically paying orders. Okay, give me an IP address. And then once you authenticate it, it will uh, give you an IP address, which is request stage, which is the CP client. Uh, those are the clients, okay? Client means uh, something that gets some uh, service, some uh, client, some entity that gets the service. So request stage DHCP client broadcasts a DHCP request message. Okay, so first say anybody here, give me IP address. And this guy says, okay, I have IP address. And then it says, okay, give me IP address. And say, okay, here you go. So this is how it works. So once it's connected on your order, if it's direct connection, you don't need authentication because the router trusted uh, network connection. First, you say, uh, can you give me an IP address? I use a DSCP order. As they say, yes, I am the DSCP order. Okay, give me an IP address. Okay, here you go. I give you um, IP address of this. And then this guy logged in right after this laptop, it get number five, this get number six, this get guys number get eight, seven, this was one. So they got like, if you see it, it's increased in sequentially, uh, 196, 190, right? uh, eight, one dot three. So that's DHCP client, how DHCP works. Um, sometime when you connect your router wirelessly or uh, sort of wire, you might not get IP address. Maybe your router having problem, maybe your router having a bad day. So the easiest way to solve that problem is to power off, power back on, um, especially uh, some of the uh, router could, you know, uh, malfunction if you don't, like okay, if you never restored for about like a month or two months and it has, uh, I don't know, there's some problem in it. It just usually restarting your uh, modem or router will help you solve that problem. Any question on DHCP is okay. If you have any question, please do interrupt and ask. Uh, this is a very important concept because uh, I'm gonna do some, uh, I'm gonna do summary of the class, but anyway, so we have to understand this. So what is uh, another concept is gateway. So do you remember, we're gonna learn about some words IP. Uh, we have two DNS here, same DNS. Um, we learned about IP. Now we're gonna learn about, we learn about DHCP, which give you IP address. IP address is given by DHCP server. So in, in, in this case, you IP service provider, Turk Telecom has a big DHCP server somewhere, some office somewhere. So when you connect this through the router, they will give you the IP address DHCP server, just like this guys did. So imagine same thing here, your router connected to the internet through the cable or Wi-Fi or wire to the Turk Telecom. They have a something at uh, DHCP somewhere in their 
offices will give you public IP address to use one public IP address. And then you can connect those internet. And then here become your job. This is like, a, this guy has a two brain, but this guy has two brain. So this too long. So one brain is for public to the internet, get DHCP uh, request, DHCP service from the internet. And then another brand, this side, give IP address to all the clients. So it's like, uh, has a two functions, two brains, okay? Now, the gateway. Gateway is basically, uh, we call it, uh, gateway is a way, a gate. Gate is darwaza or big, chic, uh, or kappa, kappa, we go outside. So gateway is basically your gateway. This is also plays a gateway. Your router is your gateway that takes you to internet. So anything, internet of things, car, telephone, company, your cell phone, home cell phone, everything need a gateway to get to the internet, which is your, your door to get internet. All the traffic coming in, coming through. Uh, oh, sorry. So this is um, your your your router is also a gateway. You also your router. So it it's very small device. A lot of function built into is this very small device. It's a gateway. It's a router. It is um, a DHCP server. It's a DNS server. It is a sometimes play as a print server. So. It a lot of functionality built into this very single device because for home, you had to hire somebody to build all the things separately. So that's impossible. So make it's making it very small, but function to bundle everything into one device. So gateway is uh, the, the router or whatever device take you to the internet, connect your internet to you and then connect you to the internet. Every device need a gateway. Uh, internet of the car, car has Wi-Fi function, car has a cell phone, cellular uh, internet connection. Even your phone has a gateway in it, uh, built in, in wireless function. So otherwise you will not able to connect to the internet. When you're browsing, uh, you're watching video, you do uh, TikToking, you do uh, Instagram, whatever. There is a gateway to take you to, to the wireless signal and that wireless signal will take you to the internet. So what is gateway? So gateway is basically your internal network take you to the internet. So you have uh, two lags, one lag connected to your internal network, another lags uh, connected to the internet. So if you look at some of your um, uh, router, if you have time sometime today after the class, you may take a look uh, the back of your uh, router. You will see uh, two very distinguished ports. You might see uh, something like this. Um, you might see a port here, and then you have small uh, four ports here. And this port may be labeled as RAN. And then other four ports may be labeled as LAN. And then one, two, oh. It's supposed to be two, two. And then this is three, uh, whatever, how many ports you have. So you have two ports, two uh, jacks. One jack is connected to the internet. So this one is connected to the internet. And then those are is connected for you uh, internal devices. Okay. So your one port is van port with is wireless oh no not wireless uh, wide network wide area network and the other four ports is connected for internal so one is for uh, public 
One is for private. So private, you can have many networks, many sub networks, uh, whatever you want. <clears throat> Here, uh, in this structure, the internal networks, they build a two network inside the network, inside it. So if you pay attention, so this network is kind of like starts one, right? And this one starts two. And then one, this is like two dot one network. This is one dot one network. If you look at third and fourth octet, this one third of octet is two. This one third octet is one. So you have two different networks. If you look at their uh, IP address, they are different. This one starts at 10 dot 10 dot zero dot one. And then this one start 10 dot zero dot two. And then you can have uh, all this, uh, this is a host um, network ID. This is a host ID. So this is a network starts from here. This is this network. This is 10.0.1. network. So, so you have this is a gateway. This is an order uh, because this is different network connect, try to talk to this network. You need the router to pass it. Um, so don't worry if it's not, you are not uh, understanding it. Uh, you will, the more you exercise, you do it, <clears throat> the more understanding you will get it. So this is your typical home network. Um, so you have one entry point somewhere here. So you have entry point here, your router or your modem. Uh, I don't know what I would call you. So, and then you have a lot of other devices. You have our other computer here, you have a TV, you have a gaming machine, you have a server and you have a Wi-Fi, everything. But if you look at it, it basically, it looks complicated, but it's not really complicated. It's you have router connected to your service provider to internet, which is here. This is connects cable to the street, right? Somewhere on the street, somewhere. And you connect it to your home. And then everything is connected through this guy, either through wire or wirelessly. And then this guy is connected to his internet. Okay, so that's a, a very basic, uh, uh, very basic uh, structure of home network. But if you look at it, it's not that complicated. So you have one gateway to get us internet. So basically what you need to understand here is you need a gateway to get to internet. You can have anything inside your gateway. So to, you have, you can have anything inside your gateway from here, here. That's a hundred percent under your control. You can do whatever you want to do. You can put uh, laptop, server, whatever you want to do. So from here on is where your control ends. You have no control uh, how this communicate, how you get to the internet, how you, uh, browser uh, uh, website, how you do it. So this is totally out of your control. So um, that's a typical home network uh, configuration. So this is a typical uh, corporate configuration. It looks very complicated. Uh, it is. <laughs> if you uh, look at the complicated, if you look at an operational perspective, it is complicated. But if you look in the architectural uh, perspective, um, it is not that complicated. When you, so there's different ways to uh, look at things. When you do uh, analyze problem, you can look at from the top. Uh, we call the bird's eye view or architecture view, or you can look at very uh, date, very uh, uh, lower mode, how it works, like more like operational mode. Um, if you're in operational mode, uh, you might 
not see all the picture. So in order to be more effective, you had to look at from the top level and the operational level, and then you can see all the picture. So here, yes, it's very complicated. You have like 50 some servers. This is not very complicated. This is typical. Uh, if you have about like 500 or 200 or 100 um, uh, company, uh, people company, this is uh, not very complicated. This is like typical, uh, typical configuration. Uh, depending on what you do, if a uh, company, if it's a very simple company, you might not different. You might have very simple, just one server, one firewall and then workstation. But um, this is kind of, uh, I would say typical, uh, more of like a bigger corporation, like a banks, financial uh, institution, um, aviation. This is like typical configuration like here. But if you look at in, in uh, architecture level, well, let me bring it here. So if you look at architecture level, so you have entry point here. Let me uh, clear this one. Great. So you have an entry point here. You see, your gateway, right? And then you have another line entry point here. You basically you two gateways. So there are two ways to get into uh, communicate, get into the network, or uh, the network communicate to the internet. Okay, so if you look at the router, this is basically your gateway that is connected everything here. If you look at second stage, it's not very different from the way you do look at the home here. So you have a gateway here to the internet, right? And because the corporation has a lot of uh, functionality, uh, they have more protection. They need to protect a lot of assets. They have different uh, services, different um, equipment. It's a little bit complicated. So right after the order, you have firewall, which is kind of blocking any bad things happening to block any unwanted uh, attacks and wanted traffic. Um, and then from firewall, if you look at all things connected to a switch, okay, let me uh, clear this one. So, here, some of them connected directly to the firewall here, here. Some of the connect to sort of this switch. And then you have uh, another switch here connected to the router here. Everything's connected to one switch. So it's basically, it's not just like this, but it's more distributed, uh, different function. But if you look at, if you look at the whole um, infrastructure, as a whole, everything. Oh, no, no. Okay, let me clear this one. So, if you look at everything as a single unit from here to uh, here, from here to here, oh, I should use a green one, no, blue one. Okay. So, if you look at from here, to here as a one single unit. You basically look like more like a home network. You have router, you have internet, and then everything inside. So it looks very complicated, but in, in architecture level, in, in, a, in a high level bird's eye, bird's eye view, it's not really complicated. So you have one internet access point. Everything is coming through here. If you, uh, if the, uh, the, a threat actor comes from here. If you can penetrate the firewall, it basically can get to everyone here. So this is a firewall. Uh, purpose of firewall is to uh, block any uh, outside threats, outside the malware, viruses, or hackers. They want to use stop sort of uh, firewall. It, you see, this has two double firewall. Um, it has a different functionality. This one's connected to here. This one's connected to here. Basically, uh, what I'm trying to say is. Uh, you need one gateway to get to the internet, regardless of your uh, size of your uh, business or home. Um, 
if you have a lot of devices, you might need two gateway like this, get to the internet. But uh, usually um, the way they work is you had to have one gateway minimum to get to the internet. Whatever you have inside uh, doesn't really matter. Uh, it's up to you how you configure depending on your business, depending on your needs, it will uh, maybe look a different. Now, this is a like a kind of physical configuration structure. Now let's take a look at the logical uh, structure. If you're bored, don't worry about it. This is, I just want you to see a higher level structure. So you have some idea what you are uh, getting into, okay? So here, I just want you to see the big view. So you have a corporate site here, and then you have two gateways or router connected to your internet service provider. So this is uh, more like fault tolerance. If something happened to this guy, this guy can get to your internet. And if you, if you uh, if you want, if you important, uh, if your uh, internet is very important to your home, you can put two uh, service provider from two different company. If one have problem, you can use other one. This is basically uh, like a, a fault tolerance. If something happened to this guy, this guy, everybody can connect to this guy. This guy having problem, everything is connected to here. If everything is connected, this one is like like double double uh, connection. To if something happened to this one to communicate uh, without any problem. So this is like a logical map. So basically the same thing. It looks complicated. Don't worry about what is inside. So the basic, uh, uh, basic structure applies here too. So you have a internal network, you have a gateway and you go to the internet. So the internet will connect it to another gateway here in some way, another company, another service provider, Google or banks or your school website, whatever. These guys are responsible to take you to there. So don't worry about how it takes to you. That's how it works. So it's simple as like home network, but uh, like in structure in, a, in a how it works, but in more like structure wise, uh, operational wise, it's uh, much complicated. But basic principle are same. It doesn't change. You have a network and you need a gateway to get out. You need public IP address to talk to anything on the internet. Your private IP address, you can, this is private. You can do anything you want in the private IP address. Uh, private RP distribution, okay? Okay, let's do the next one. So now we come to router. Router is basically uh, routing traffic from one network to another network. It works on IP, uh, routes through IP address. So if you want, if this one's IP address is, um, let's say, uh, it works the IP address level. Let's say this guy's IP address is 192.168.1.200. And then this PC's IP address is 10.2.2.199. Okay. So if you look at it, it's very different network. In, they are two, uh, they are in, um, two different network. This is 192 network. This guy is a 10.2 network. If you put in same, if you connect this, let's say you have a one computer here, one computer here, and then you have IP address of uh, this one is 10.2.199. And then this one is 192. 
So if you want to talk to each other, you cannot really talk to each other because they are uh, two different network. This is um, this is 190 network, this 192 network. So even the class are different. So if you run the cable directly, <laughs> they don't talk to each other. Even they connect it, they will not talk to each other because they are two different networks. The network uh, ID is different. See, one end. They, even you connect cable, they are not gonna talk to each other. In order for them to talk, you need a router from different IP address to different IP address, okay? And this they can talk. This router is basically have, it's like a, it's like translator. One guy speaking a French, one guy speaking Turkish, and then they cannot communicate. So you need a translator that translate or connect the two guys say, this guy say, bonjour, and then this guy don't understand it. So the router has say, oh, this guy trying to say marhaba, and then translate to this guy, and this guy's translate, okay, I got it. And then it's like, that, it's not the exact translation. I just give you a give you a um, sense of how it works. It's if it's two different network, you need a router, uh, route the traffic from one place to another network. So this is a, how the router works. And switch is it's basically um, um, very uh, low level devices. Um, what it does is. Every computer, in order, uh, every computer has a, a MAC address. It's called a, a media access control address, or we call it hardware address. It is built into your computer. You cannot erase it. You cannot delete it. You cannot do anything about it. It's just like that. So it is very long uh, address. I can show you mine, let's see. Um, one second. So MAC address is meant to talk to switch. So if you look at here, okay, this one is not, okay. Okay, I think this is VP6, okay. All right, so if you uh, look at here, so I have a physical address, which is the one I'm talking about, the Mac address. This is, is when you, whoever made your computer, they will write down this address on your network card. So you cannot really erase it. You cannot really delete it. Uh, you cannot do anything about it. So it says DHCP enabled. Yes, that means I am um, I can shout out to DHCP server. I need IP address, and then they will give me automatically. This is my IP address. You see ten, right? So that is my uh, local uh, private IP address because. I configured not 192, I configured as 10.10.10.1. And then you see gateway. The gateway is supposed to be, uh, this one is my gateway, 10.0.0.1. So I need a, so in order to talk to different network, I need a gateway or router. But in order to talk to my neighbor, uh, let's say uh, the computer next to me, it needs using a switch to uh, so Mac physical address. So what it does is as it build a, a table. So it has a table like this. So this switch has a table. You connect it to port. Okay. 
you connect the port one here. PCC is connected <laughs> between the different system. Okay. Let's do this one. You connect it to PCC, right? Or the port here, the number one port. So what it does is it will remember it will it has a function that getting your physical IP address let's say, uh, one C two uh, two D twenty four three something like that, and then it will label say it's on port one. It has a table to tell, let's say, I want to communicate PC2. It will remember sort of IP address. Uh, this switch is, this doesn't really see IP address. It just sees a, a port number. So first, I want to talk to P, computer C. So first, it can uh, look at, oh, computer C. I know it is. It isn't connected to port. This is a, a MAC address here. So they know which one is. Once it's connected, it registers those uh, address and then get connection to it. So um, switch, you don't have to much worry about it. It's just dumb device that connected. It's like signal. You turn out so like, like you light switch. You connect one port, you turn it off. It connecting to your power. So not much on switch. It's just connecting your internal devices. That's all. Um, And then this is a little bit more complicated router configuration. So you have about four different uh, network. So you have 11, 14 network, and you have 12, 13 network. In order to for them to communicate, they will need a router. This router knows. Let uh, this router knows. It has a table just like we talked about it. Router one knows that router three is connected to here and it has IP address of anything start with 13. This is a routing table. You look at this one. This one's a routing table for this router, right? So it has, okay, 11.8. Anything that is uh, network 11, it's a direct. That means I am the 11 network. Router knows, okay, I am the 11 network because it's a direct connection. Now, if any computer here want to talk to a, a computer IP address of 13 here, so this can ask your router, say, hey, I want to talk to a computer on uh, IP address started with 13. Can you get me there? And then this guy's looking at it. Okay, let me check. 12, no, you want to talk to 13. Oh, 13, oh, here. So how do I get there? Oh, let me check uh, which route I take. Oh, it's in the router three. Okay. Oh, router three is connected to my port two. Okay, I got it. I got it for you. Okay, let me route it for you. So. This guy can get traffic from switch and you get here and they say, oh, it's in a, it's in a, uh, connected to this port. Okay, let me take you to here. Once you get to here, his, the router one job is done. Okay, its job is done. So, and then because the traffic come here and then the router city say, hey, uh, where do you want to go? I say, oh, I want to talk to one of you whatever client, and then it will find which one it is through the switch. So router is just take you a computer tech from here to another place. And then it's done. And then this router will take care of it. Let's say uh, 12, the computer here wants to talk to computer here. So it can ask its router, say, I want to talk to uh, computer 14, I want to talk to computer um, 14 dot uh, one dot three dot three. 
this is one dot two dot three computer. I want to talk to this computer. And then it will ask router, router look at say, okay, where do you want to go? I want to go to uh, network 14. And it would start looking at the IP address 12, no, 11, no, you want to go to 14, 13, no, you want to go 14, 14, oh, okay. Ah, 14, you need to go to router one. How do I get to router one? And then in order to go to, uh, no, I want to go to four, it's in the router, it's supposed to router four. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, to get to the router four, you need to go to the router one. It does have router four. Pay attention to this one. It does have router four. It just know how to get there. This guy knows how to get to 14. You need to go to the router one, okay? So again, in order to talk to 14, you go to router one. Router one, it comes through here. So I can transfer your signal to this guy. And then this guy said, hey, I want to go to the router four or 14, sorry. I want to go to router 14. How do I get there? And then this router says, oh, let me check. How do I get to 14? Let me check my table. Let me check my address book. Okay, 11, no, you want to go 14, 12, no, 13, no, 14, oh. I have, I know what to, how to get 14. In order to go to 14, you need to go to router four. Oh, where's the router four? Oh, router four is connected to my, this port. Okay, let me take you this traffic to router four. And then once you get to the router four, and then router four say, oh, where do you want to go? I want to go 14, one, two, three. Oh, let me center my switch. Or, and then say, Oh, do you know where is it? Two, three is, or maybe you just send to here, depending on the configuration. I know 14, one, two, three is inside the main, my network. I will take care from here and it will send signal to the 14. So that's how a uh, router works. So it even like, uh, um, let's see, 413 is the same. 13, you have direct connection like this, so you don't have to pass through. And if uh, from 13 goes to uh, 11, it has all the table, if you want to go, so yeah, that's how it works. It's basically the whole internet works as well. If you want to go from one port to another port, you need uh, all this between traffic um, to router, okay? Yeah, we talk about switch. Switch is basically uh, every switch port has MAC address registered. Uh, port one is for this IP or for this MAC address. And once the router sends a signal to switch and switch knows where to get, send that uh, signal to the computer. So this is a uh, comparison how different your home router with the commercial router. Your home router looks like one of this or similar to size, uh, very small. And then it's uh, it's slow compared to some of the router you have. This is a uh, Cisco is a, a, a defector standard in internet to route the traffic. So look at those, uh, how big it is. So basically the bigger it is, it, it has, what it does is basically the routing table. It hosts the routing table where to go because you are dealing with thousands of communication, thousands of traffic, thousands of packets coming through and you need to have like a big memory process power storage to process those. So the smaller office for 200 people, 100 people, those are should be enough to deal with. But if you like a, a big corporation like banks or uh, aviation, you have so many traffic coming in. Like if you buy a ticket for airplane and then let's say like 2000 people buying tickets every second, every minute. 
So you want to process all those coming traffic in a, a bigger machine. So you had to have a bigger router to process those requests to your system. Otherwise, if you put this kind of router into your uh, ticketing system, and then you have 2000 people coming to buy your ticket, you only can handle 10, the other 1990 people has to stay in the line until they process the 10. And then they will get tired of it. Say, I will go to a different site, different ticketing agent, because I've been waiting for two minutes. Yeah, two minutes to buy a ticket online, waiting online to, to wait for a page to load. Two minutes is like internal for the company. It is, just imagine yourself, right? You want to open a site. It doesn't come out like uh, within five seconds. You will complain. Five seconds is like, oh my gosh, this is uh, taking too long. Five seconds, imagine that. Um, so um, the internet, fast internet has been raised people's expectation, how fast it should be. Uh, some of you are doesn't uh, really experience like a modem e era. It's like downloading a picture is like you, if you click, let's say, imagine you on the Facebook, you click uh, your friend's profile and you have picture right now it's instant it shows up. And uh, my early days dealing with internet. So you have a picture and you click on it and then you go to uh, eat your uh, food and they come back and then you see the face and it still comes to the, uh, coming to other part. It, it just comes from head to maybe chin, maybe face. Um, and then you come back, do something else. And then you see by, by the time you're coming in, come back and then you may see whole picture. So that's how slow it is. Nowadays, if you the picture doesn't come in at like a two, three seconds, you will, oh, this is terrible. So that's how people become uh, so uh, expected to be fast and in um, service. Of course, all the company, commercial company wants to keep you on their site uh, as long as they want. The more you stay in, the, in their site, the more value you will become because you are their uh, battery. You're making money for them. The more the Facebook time you visit there, you basically uh, it become battery. Oh, we, I don't want to use zombie, but battery UPS. for uh, UPS, yeah, battery for them because you are feeling for the business. You are making money for them. Yeah, you maybe feel happy. Uh, but it's instant happy. It's like uh, in, in, uh, we call instant gratification. Once you cl close the Facebook, you mind still in thinking about what's going on in their Facebook. Even it has nothing to do with you. Um, even you don't open Facebook, your life not going to be any different, but you still worry about something. It's like you control uh, what you see. No, not like that. So, um, so that's why they, they provide like instant services, fast services, make sure you uh, stay in, in, in engaged um, so that they know more about you, more be, become like targeted uh, advertiser or whatever the reason they want you to stay. So um, I might share you a different story about TikTok. Uh, let's finish the main topic first. So this is another like uh, uh, logical. So I want to keep telling you this uh, uh, network is I want to see, I want you to see the picture, how internet works, how computer network works because as a technical skill, this is like more high level stuff because uh, as a cybersecurity specialist, you will get trained and you will get into this direction if you're looking for a job or you're looking for engineering on this field. Um, you need to understand how they communicate, um, router switch, uh, like IP, uh, routing table. You don't have to know very detail, 
but at least you know how they communicate, how they get there, how to get to the internet, how internet gets to you. So you don't have to know uh, very details. So you need to know the logical uh, structure to be good investigator. So 9.30 now, do you guys want to take a break or you want to continue? No. Yeah. You want to take yeah, a break? Okay, let's get 10 minutes break. Yeah, yeah, thank you so much. And then I will continue, we will continue. Let's see, we don't have much stuff, but yeah. Okay, let's get 10 minutes break so I don't fill up too much information on your brain.
So what net is, do you remember we talked about here? So you have public IP address, you have a private IP address. What basically net does, it's called a network address translation. Basically it translate uh, public IP address into private IP address. So do you remember we cannot have like the unlimited public IP address in our private network? So what NAT does is basically uh, you have a, using your private IP, utilizing, uh, putting uh, public IP as proxy or a representative, and it's all also doing this net. So when, so your net, network address translation, your net sitting net. Your net is basically a, basically a function that translate your public IP address, connect your private IP address. So you have one, you have two. So you only have one IP address, right? You want to go to internet with all the devices. But since this, your private IP address can be routed, so you had to using NAT to go out. And when you come back in, they use NAT, translate that IP address into your private IP address. So that's basically what NAT is. And let's go back to our agenda again. So NAT, so Bridget connection is, uh, that is related to virtual network. Uh, host is the related to virtual network and we can talk about DNS and then we will uh, get into um, virtual network uh, uh, configuration because that will be help you to, um, um, do lab exercise uh, in future classes, okay? So DNS is basically, uh, let me bring my whiteboard. Um, where's my whiteboard? I need to stop sharing my screen first, right? I think there's a good video I want to show you before. So let me just give you a broad view first before I show you that video. I couldn't find it. Um, so what, uh, so, here, let me ask you, uh, would uh, the, here we have a question. Would net be a device, gadget, or cable? So net is a, is a software just like DHCP server. It's like a, a service inside the router. Um, um, it's, not a, it's, it, it's not like standalone device. It cannot be standalone device. It's just part of router. A uh, part of switch, a uh, part of your router. Um, yeah, it's part of the router. It cannot be as a standalone device. It has to work with the router because the net function is translate IP address to private IP address. So it's a it's a part of uh, uh, router. It it cannot be a device. It cannot be a gadget. It's not like standalone gadget. It it gadget. It's it is a part of the router. Okay. Thank you for the question. Uh, if you have a question, this is a good way to put it on the uh, chat. So how many uh, friends on your cell phone? Let's say, um, I, I never count how many contacts I have in my cell phone. I would say maybe roughly 50, give and take 40. Uh, you, you may be different, maybe more, maybe less. I don't really never counted how many people in my contact list um, on, my on my phone. 
like how you communicate for. So how many people's phone number do you remember? Um, if you want to put it in the chat, that's fine. Um, if I had to know, uh, dial a number to call somebody, the most number I know maybe five out of maybe 100 contacts. So let's say, um, let me put mine first, just give you like a uh, like general estimate. I might have a 50 contacts. Out of three, I remember the real phone numbers and number number, not like a number. I may remember maximum four, maybe no, five is five is kind of not true. Uh, I, let's see. One, two, maybe three out of 50. If I doesn't pull up, let's say I give you a, give you a phone. Um, here's a good example. Let's see. If I give you a Nokia old phone. I want to get something here. Be patient with me. I'm just trying to give you, um, because the old starter, I want to make it as easy possible to understand the DNS because this is one of the very important concept. So, so what is this just on the screen? Anybody knows, anybody saw one before in your lifetime? Maybe new generation never saw one. So this is a, are you sharing my, seeing my screen? Yes, yes. Okay, First. cool. Yeah, just <laughs> make sure. Um, okay, this is a, a phone, right? Um, imagine you are in the uh, middle of the desert and then I give you, uh, you need help. And I have signal, the phone has a signal. And then I said, I need help. I need dial, I need to call somebody for help. So I give you this phone or your phone is this phone. It has a signal. How many number do you remember to call? Do you, let's say, how many number do you know? You can recall from your memory. Five, two. Five, three. two, maybe, yeah. Maybe three. Maybe three. You know, it's a very important one, right? <laughs> yeah. So, this is a this is a kind of so we are the smartphone taking us over smartness because we putting some of our brain onto the phone and then we have less brain to use. Uh, we kind of like your cell phone, your computer become like half of your brain. Google is kind of your uh, mentor, your imagination, and then Facebook is your friend. You basically you we all kind of losing our identity. Right, you be losing our uh, humanity, kind of the technology kind of taking off uh, our uh, basic instinct as well. So you replace your friends with uh, Facebook, you replace um, your uh, friends contact with the directory. So what I'm trying to say is the DNS is a way to, it's like contactless on the internet. So, um, if I say Yahoo, everybody knows. If I say Google, everybody knows. Right? We just type google.com, facebook.com. And the computer in, in basic layer, computer doesn't know any of those characters. Computer doesn't know what Facebook is. Computer doesn't know what Google means, how to get there. So at the beginning, what we 
talk about what computer does need the basic to communicate each other. Do anybody remember? What computer need to communicate? IP address. Yes, IP address. So you had to have an IP address. So uh, does anybody knows what's IP address of Facebook? Since you all in Facebook, uh, I bet. IP address. Account? No. Oh, IP address. It's like servers at Facebook. Facebook should have a server, a computer, right? Yeah. It has, a, because it's computer somewhere, in order to communicate with you, it needs IP address. Right? Mm -hmm. So, what is that IP address? Let's see. I find, I just did one, one, seven. 57, 240, it might be the exact IP address, it might be proxies, but we try our luck, see what happens. So let me paste it here. So this is our Facebook IP address. Uh, so from tomorrow on, you don't use facebook.com, use 157, 240, 229, 275, 75 to access internet to Facebook page. Who wants that? Nobody wants that, right? Um, this is a weird DNS coming in to help you make it uh, half, take away half of your brain. Um, let's try that IP address if you can get to um, Facebook. You copy it. I get it worked. Huh? It did work on yours? It worked, yeah. It directly oh. goes to Facebook. Yes, good. So, yeah, it take me to Facebook too. So, forget about Facebook.com. Tomorrow, from tomorrow on, everybody use what? This IP address, okay? Don't use Facebook.com. So, how many of you can do that? None of you can say, that, that's, that's, that's, you can say, that's stupid. Yeah, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna remember this. What is this number? 157.240.229.235. Nobody can do that. So, uh, fortunately, the DNS here to help us. DNS is basically uh, uh, your address book on the internet. So, mm -hmm. um, so you have, let me uh, draw a picture here. Oh. So let's get uh, text. So you have this uh, big DNS server and it has a table, not very complicated, very simple table. Um, let me just insert a uh, table. This guy does have a table. Um, yeah, just imagine this is a table and then you have a rows two rows, three rows, four rows. So what it does is it basically, let's say facebook.com, facebook.com pointed to, this is name. And then this is IP address, facebook.com pointed to 157. 240-229-35. So this is your address book on your, like in your phone. So when you type facebook.com, not that one. When you type facebook.com, it will, um, so it can go to your internet service providers uh, DNS, this is DNS, DNS server. Uh, it's called domain naming, domain name server, service or server, depending on who you ask. If you ask uh, different people, it might be called this service or server. I think it's, I get used to domain name server. So 
the domain is the have the, a lot of the IP address or the domain IP address or the public IP address. Domain name is a, you basically your name, it's like server name. Server name. Yeah, oh. domain is like a domain like area, right? Domain is Facebook, Google, Microsoft. That's a domain. Oh. That's domain name. So what it does is once you um, here you are asking for when you type browser facebook.com it can kind of goes to your internet service provider dns and then says hey i want to go to facebook.com do you know what is ip address and then so here here you and asking type for www.facebook.com and it goes to your this is isp which is your Turk telecom telecom okay so you type ip address say uh, facebook.com it can go to trick telecom dns and then trick telecom say because i can't really communicate with the name i had to know ip address my ip public ip address here is a 132 132 20 something 22 23 31, okay, whatever. So my IP address is this, and I want to talk to facebook.com and the telecom has DNS server, okay? And it says, okay, let me check uh, IP address. And you can say, okay, okay, this is server is 130, Oh, here is your IP address. It can first, and it gave me back my, uh, this IP address to here. I said, okay, I got my IP address, okay. Now I can talk to this guy directly. So here I don't have password DNS. So I know you have direct connection now. Of course it's password uh, Turic Telecom uh, connected to this one because internet. But DNS is basically uh, uh, find your IP address and then you can communicate with the IP address. That's what DNS is, domain name server. Domain is a, a name of the name of the company. So. It is similar to, uh, let's say in the real life example, um, I want to find one of you. I know your name, but I don't know address. I don't know home address, anything. So what I do is I gonna go to like uh, uh, your immigration office, if they are low to, and they say, I want find such, such, such person. Um, I only know your name, but I don't know your address. And then the address or post office says, okay, this person lives in 24th street, door number two, room number three. Now post office job is done, right? Then it can take me there. So I, once I get your address, I will look at that address and go to your house. That's how it works. That's what DNS is basically your, uh, um, uh, that's uh, uh, just translate your I, uh, I, I not find IP address to you for you to communicate. So you don't need a, a domain name in some cases, like I did here. You just need to remember this number to get in there, but this number it may change time to time. So, but name doesn't change. So that's what it does. Okay. Can we say is the a domain name is the public IP address book just like that? Yes, that's what it is. Yes, that's basically what it is. You're right. So, in a virtual environment, we talked about virtualization last classes. Um, a virtual environment, you're basically building a, a virtual machine inside the virtual machine. Mm -hmm. um, like, uh, let me use my book. <clears throat> Can I ask you something? Sure. A virtual machine is just like the not physical machine. No. They have some system, all right? Yes, yes. That's correct? Yes. We're talking about this uh, last class. Uh, I will uh, upload uh, short, yeah. some uh, edited class in the uh, edu uh, flow so yeah, you can yeah. see it. I will. Um, 
if you have, I, I see there's a couple students have not logged into Eduflow. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure I resent invitation yesterday. Uh, make sure you log in um, to, uh, I'm gonna put chat here. Uh, make sure you register because I will put, I, you can only see those video if you log in into Eduflow. I haven't uploaded it yet, but uh, I want you to. Can, can we have course code? Course code? Yeah. Uh, which code? Well, it asks to. Um, oh, to course, yeah, yeah. If you code. if you send me email already, I will add you email to the code. There's no course code. I just, oh, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, Thank if you, you have email already in the course, you need you don't need to uh, course code. So oh, okay, I encourage you to use a uh, uh, Gmail or. Um, because uh, it, it's integrated very well with your Gmail mm -hmm. authentication. So you don't have to remember any password. You just uh, log in through, uh, through, once you um, authenticate through the Google, it will, um, it will um, let you in. So we don't store any password, anything. It just, uh, you log into your Google account. They just yeah. tell, uh, once you uh, log through Google, it will uh, authenticate into the system, okay? It's a, okay. uh, it's a single sign on. So I'm not, the system doesn't store you any password. It just, first, uh, it will uh, go to Google, authenticate yourself, mm -hmm. and then uh, give the Eduflow a token, say, this guy is a trusted, and then mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the portal will let you in. So okay. uh, we talked about virtual uh, server last classes. So virtual server is basically a small uh, portion uh, do you remember we that hypervisor? When you install the uh, virtual box or VMware, uh, it will build a virtual switch inside your computer. Uh, the virtualization is we uh, one physical computer we can install um, several uh, one physical computer can host uh, several virtual computer. In order for this computer inside, excuse me. Uh, communicate with outside through the uh, network card installed on your uh, physical server, physical device, there's a virtual switch, just like this switch. Just like this switch, this is a physical switch. All this computer, you know, to communicate with the outside, you need to connect to the switch. So this is a basically a virtual switch. It connects here and then it has another uh, port that connects to um, your uh, physical Wi-Fi card and it take it to your zero. That's basically um, what switch does. So here it playing both uh, your router, your switch, your DHCP server and uh, your gateway. It can, play different role depending on how you set it up, how you, how you um, choose to be. We will talk about it, how you choose which role it plays when you want it, because you all, all of computer can be uh, separated or split it into a different network. So this is uh, like virtual and physical network comparison. So in um, physical network, you just connect it to directly, right? So here you have a, a physical computer connected to your switch. And if you connect to another host computer, another uh, virtual machine. So first you had to go to switch on your virtual environment, go to this router, just like a, a physical computer, connect to physical computers, computers network card and then from there you connect to other virtual computer in different host. So here it's very interesting. So you had this other virtual machine here in this host. This is another virtual machine and a different host. For them to communicate, it has to go through this virtual switch, go to the real router and it go come back to the uh, physical host and then from here to go to your virtual machine. 
basically it looks like it's it similar to how uh, physical switch works, but it's a virtual environment. Okay. So virtual network type, you have bridged network type. That's a virtual network type, okay? This is kind of a, uh, and there is a different, uh, there's a router can be uh, bridged, but it's a little bit higher level uh, networking concept. So, so just remember in the virtual network type, you can have three mode, three type, once bridged, uh, that is connect uh, connect uh, your VM directly your physical network. It basically, what it says is your physical your virtual computer act as like part of your uh, physical computer as a separate computer connected to. And we will see the sample. And you have NAT network address translation. Basically, your uh, virtual machine acting as a router and in your virtual computer acting like a client and host only, which is only communicate with a uh, uh, host machine. We will see it. Muhammad Abdullah, okay. So this is a bridged network. Uh, this guy's trying to cross the uh, <laughs> glass bridge. So this is a, you know, sometimes, uh, <laughs> this is safe bridge, right? Even it's safe, he's scared. Uh, maybe I'm scared if I go there. Maybe you are, some of you scared, some of you not scared. So um, here is a, the fear is in your mind, right? Even it has nothing to do with the safety, we still fear. So fear is kind of thinking, it's a, it's a state of mentality so you can change it if you have a fear it's like when you see a snake you get fear even the snake is inside the box and we get still get fear we get scared but uh, so you can change that thinking to be not to fear look at this guy he was crying he was like almost fall down <laughs> so it is imagining he is imagining he will fall and then that imagination become real and then he become real scared and lying on the, uh, the bridge try to protect itself it seems he's thinking just lying down on the glass maybe make him a little bit safer than the standing up so your imagination kind of like it produce a lot of fake uh, reality and then sometimes fake reality uh, trigger you uh, real reality and then cause some pain. So make sure you thinking healthy uh, thoughts. Um, when you just fear coming into your mind, make sure uh, look at reality, it's just thinking. So try to get some um, like a psychological books or there's a lot of good uh, lecture on um, uh, we would lecture as well in uh, YouTube. So get some references, um, overcome your fear. So this is Bridget connection. So Bridget connection is your virtual network adapter is basically virtually connected to your uh, network's physical switch and then act like a, a physical computer. So this is like Bridget mode. So here, you basically, uh, this is like a wire, wire connected. So your virtual machine, and connected like a switch and they connected directly through here and they connected to the switch. If you look at the IP address, they have some network IP address like a physical machine, 192.10.6789, and then here 11, 12, 13. So basically this is more like direct, you connecting to your, uh, your local network, even it's virtual, this is called bridge. So this become a bridge. This is a bridge. The, your switch is become bridge. It doesn't do anything. It just pass the traffic from here to here. It doesn't stop. It doesn't convert. It doesn't translate anything. It's just more like a, you, you connecting wire directly here. 
and then you have a uh, net. Net is basically you have a virtual DHCP server when you want IP address. In net situation, this guy thinking that he is the end of the internet, end of the network. Okay, so if you want to go out here, say no, you cannot go out because you need to go get IP address. And then you go get IP address and then come back here and say, I want to go to the internet. Okay, I let you go out now because I am the internet here. He thinks he is internet. And everybody thinks this guy is internet. So, and then it will translate traffic to the physical network, the network coming in and distribute to here. So basically it is, translating internal network to, it's like a, this like whole network itself, okay? This is act like your router, your ISP. This guy say, I am the end of the world. I am the, the most high, I am the uh, internet. If you go internet, you had to pass through with, with me. So, and then this, that's called it's network translation. It has, and this like more acting like a router, okay? And then, uh, yeah, because we had to see it to understand it, but uh, we're gonna have some exercise on this one, hopefully, if you have enough time, but um, let's see. And then you uh, bridge it with network comparison. So in bridged network, uh, this is a physical network. So you basically you get a quick connection. You get DHCP server in from physical network. So you had to just in a bridge, it just bridge to the physical network. In that, you don't have direct connection outside. You had to connect through this guy as a router. Here, this is switch, this is just cable here. This guy act as a cable. The network card, basically it's act as like a cable, configured as cable. This one, this guy's a router in a, in a net, okay? And bridge, it just bridge. I want to go there, okay, I play as a bridge. You just pass through with me. Here, no, you had pass through the router. It's very useful uh, if you understand those. So this is another example. You have virtual boost host, and you have a virtual switch, go to those. And if I go to internet, you had to go through the physical NIC to the router. So here's a, a couple of a comparison of this uh, thing. A bridge with the host and bridge your VM connect to outside network directly uh, through the bridge. Net, you have virtual computer pass through your uh, network card as a router and then go outside. And host only, you cannot go anywhere. That's for you build a lab or testing like scanning, uh, attacking a vulnerable machine or like testing, uh, scanning a vulnerable machine, attacking a, a sort of Kali or do some research lab environment. You do uh, host only mode. So anything you do will, will stay inside. It doesn't go outside. It doesn't go to your other computer in the house. Uh, if you do scanning, it just scan inside this uh, virtual machine. It doesn't go out anything. Host just like space? Uh, yes, host just like space, yeah. Like basically it's a, a, a like a contained uh, network. It doesn't go outside. Okay. Okay, so and then, yeah, this is host only network. So basically you cannot go anywhere. This traffic is, if you go uh, to outside and say, no, I am the internet here. This, I am the end of the world. There's nothing outside. So this guy was saying, if I say, I'm gonna go outside, say, no, this is outside. This is all the world here. There's nothing outside. So you stay inside. So 
there's no way outside. So this the network was configured in this case, not to pass, pass information in and out. This is a, so you, you can do whatever you do inside here. So when you try to get outside Google, I say, no, there's no Google. I don't know what's Google mean. There's no Google, no Facebook, you stay inside. Uh, this is end of the world. There's no internet outside. So anything you do, do inside here. You want to go outside? What, where you want to go? Google, <laughs> there's no Google. I don't know what Google means. So this guy's blog, everything is host, okay? So there's no way escape from here, unless you find some like a vulnerability or something can escape, but technically that's designed for that way. But, you know, that's uh, for lab environment, for testing environment, they build testing environment, uh, this host only network for that purpose. Okay. Uh, host equals the visual machine is the visual machine just like this equals a visual machine just like that yes host is a virtual machine host is a, a computer that hosting uh, virtual machines it's yeah. like a, you have a host just like a, and then you have a guest those are guests inside your house you're mm -hmm. hosting it they eat your food they drink your food draw water uh, you have a big pot of food right mm -hmm. that's your uh, physical computer now some computer maybe need more, some maybe less. It's like you come as a guest and you share your resources with this computer. Maybe this one is sleeping. This one maybe need more memory. It can uh, uh, give you more memory on this one. So it's just sharing the same uh, disk, same memory, uh, same hard drive together. The way it uh, works. So. And this is for the VMware uh, manual. If I can find it, I will uh, find, uh, let me find the manual for you. So uh, if you want, uh, let's do one exercise. It's 1022 now. Um, did you, everybody uh, download VMware last time or just the virtual box? Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay, VMware, you have most of the VMware? We have. Yeah. Yes. We have. We have. Yes. Okay. So let me close this one. Um. Let's do here. My virtual machine is deleted, so I don't have virtual machine. Let me get the virtual machine. You did, Kali. So if you have any question, please do ask. I'm gonna download my Kali. If you have not downloaded Kali, uh, you can, most of them you did already, so. Okay, so, uh, I want to ask you something. Sure. The Starlink project, it, it's the working system, just don't just like that, right? That's, this, this is over uh, machine connected as over internet, how can be using our internet, how can be, one machine and another machine is connected. Right. right. Say that. But Starlink project is uh, is not just like the, this process, right? Uh, what do you mean starting project? He, he said. She. Yeah, she was the Kaiser Starlink'le internet taktımadı e, şeyle ama azır biz kıyıgan nesimiz zanayması bir kompüterle bir kompüterle bağlayış için kıvatka nesi. İşte kısım anlık işleş prinsipi okşumaydı o değil mi? Mesela IP ile bağlı dok. Starlink'te e, o sünye mürağlarla internet taktım okşaş IP ile bağlamdı da o anda.
Yes, mm. yes, yes, yes. Yes, this one. What's going on? Good. Awaz çıkma diye. Ah, ben söz artım. Okay. So, in order to communicate, you need media, right? It could uh -huh. be cable, it could be wireless, or it could be satellite, right? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So, and that's why you have a uh, even the different devices in different places are different, uh -huh. but they have a like a common. Uh, protocols they had to uh, follow. It's like if you come to Turkey, you speak Turkish, right? Yeah, you come yeah. to America, you speak English. So, but how about if like uh, one Turkish, one English, one French, one uh, Ukrainian fall into one cave? How do they communicate? <laughs> right? There's no common language. Yeah, yeah. How do you do it? Right? That's why they come up with a common uh, language. Uh, it's a little bit uh, advanced class, but um, I can show you now. It's a good question. Yeah. Actually, um, uh, it's what's happening in Ukraine. Uh, they starting. So they call this an open uh, SI model. It's basically how we can have different system, regardless yeah. what you use, can talk to each other. Right? Yeah. So this is a model that every device on the internet should follow when they design their uh, system. So here, this is your computer, right? Yeah. And it comes to the router. Uh, it comes to, and then it translates your signal into the wireless sent to, um, sent to a satellite. The signal, even it's a, uh, it's, it's a satellite signal, inside signal, there's IP address, um. okay? Yeah. Because medium is different now. They you are distributing signal, but inside signal there's IP destination IP address where it goes, right? Imagine this is a, a Starlink, uh, Elon Musk, uh, the satellite. This is Ukraine. This is Facebook. People want access to Facebook, right? So, in now, in this Starlink. They sending some uh, local uh, hotspots in Ukraine so people can get signal, right? Once you get signal, you can basically do anything, right? Mm. So signal in signal, uh, those devices have the router, just like a uh, router. And then once the router translates signal, so you have IP address inside signal. Inside. Yeah, Facebook IP address inside the signal. But signal is different. Your connection, if you wire connection, that's a different, but it doesn't matter. So if you use um, wire, you still have this package. Yeah, yeah. It's just like you, you're taking train, you're taking car, you're taking airplane, but mm -hmm. you don't change. It's just a medium that transport you from one place to another place are uh, different. But yeah, yeah. You, when you get to the airplane, you sit inside cabin. Right? So, yeah. so they can make you, every cabin has a packet. Mm. If you go to the bus, bus has a packet, right? You sit mm -hmm. inside here, you don't, you don't change, but you deliver a medium change. Here, yeah. your satellite, mm -hmm. you don't change. You are still inside the satellite, but your signal change, mm. right? You deliver to, uh, satellite, but satellite signal, it receives it and it sends to this guy. You use you, the satellite signal, and you're still inside. Mm. You are you are sitting airplane now. You are mm. crossing the ocean, and then when it comes to here, this guy will mm. take away your satellite signal. It convert into your bus. Mm -hmm. Now you are landing now. You you need to take taxi again, right? You are in a mm -hmm. car. You are in car now, but you're still inside. You did not change, but your mm -hmm. medium change. And then this is guy only take car. So you change your car and they go to his car computer. Once your computer here is done, they will remove 
your car, they will you remove all the outside shell and then present you when you get to here. Now you show up here. You were here, right? Yeah. And then this guy translate, put you in a taxi yeah. cab. Right? The process is the same. The process is same. Yeah, process is same. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah process is same. So, uh -huh. but the delivery medium is different. Oh, yeah, yeah. Cool. Did you thank get you. it? Thank you so much. You yes, it? thank yeah. you. Yeah. So, this is whole slide is uh, talking about that process. Uh, this is like two hour class. Um, maybe a little bit uh, too early for you uh, to understand it now, but we want to do a couple exercises until you get some of the things. Um, um, so I can send you a couple, uh, find if you search OSI model, um, it will show you how it gets there. Okay. Could you please hear a slide? Yeah, we're gonna, uh, I can put the slide onto the uh, edu flow. So you can, uh, I can upload, which slide do you want today's slide or? Today's slide. Today's. today's slide, right? Yeah, yeah. I can upload you right now. So why don't? Uh, oops. Okay. Driving. Driving. So I can um, convert it into PDF because this is a uh, PowerPoint 2020. So some of you may not able to open it. So I'm gonna save it. Okay, let's put it here. I want to save it to desktop. And then I will save it as a PDF. As PDF, yeah, we make our classes desktop. Okay, I can. I will put an edu, but I want to give it to you now, just in case you want to read. Starting reading today. Uh, where's my chat? Okay, add file, your computer, my desktop. Oh, I just did only one person. Everyone, computer. Oh, so like around five megabyte. So, okay. I put in a PDF of this lecture so you can uh, take a look, uh, read through it. So I, uh, class was over 10 o'clock. So if you want to stay more, I want to show you uh, some of settings. I just downloaded my uh, Kali. Okay, let me see. So previous classes, I uh, talked about how import, there's two way to import, two way to build a virtual machine. One is import a virtual machine that is uh, ready. Another one is installation. We did um, install uh, Windows 10 uh, computer. Let me uh, do folder. I just downloaded Kali. I want to show you how it's um, imported. So I just downloaded uh, uh, 
if you are not in uh, last class, uh, if you want to download Kali, uh, you can go here and go uh, virtual machine and then uh, click uh, if you are using uh, VirtualBox, click this one. If you're using uh, VMware, click this one. I just download the virtual machine one. What is this? It's a ready a computer. You don't need to install it. It is a ready image. I mean, uh, it's a computer that is ready. You can just import it. You can just use it. It's like you go to a store, buy a computer and open up and then you can use it. So. I download the uh, computer. I'm going to uh, open it. If you are building a new virtual machine, you start from the zero, from new virtual machine. So I am in, I think uh, one of your microphones is still on. If you can turn it off, uh, that would be great. Oh, otherwise I might uh, mute it. Okay. Uh, it's good now. Uh, What's the difference virtual machine and virtual box? Virtual uh, VMware, uh, VMware virtual uh, machine is a little bit more powerful in some cases, but you have to have a good computer because it's also a heavy weight. It take off some resources more than virtual box. The way I recommend it uh, most of you to uh, virtual box is that it's free and it's not as, as heavy weight as a virtual uh, VMware virtual uh, machine. So it's not very different from uh, what you use VirtualBox. Um, I want to show you in VMware, but it, uh, it's a, it was, let me think which we should be. We had to stick to one. Um, uh, let me, uh, since uh, installed already, uh, I just want to show you, maybe uh, by the next week, next week, we're going to stick to one, which one we're going to use. I want, uh, I want I you guys- I think we should use VirtualBox. Yes, because- Because uh, VMware is uh, not free. It's not free, yes, that's correct, yeah. But you can learn it uh, just one as a- One month is skill. free. Huh? One month is free. Yeah, one month is one free. One month. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So here, uh, I want to show you, uh, I have a Linux. The good thing is about this one is you can take, uh, clone it, uh, so I don't have to manage, clone it. I can have two, two Kali at the same time. It's like copying your computer. In the real life, you cannot do that. You had to buy a new one. But in a virtual machine, you just copy the virtual machine just like you copy a file. You copy from to your uh, folder, you copy to your thumb drive and put another computer and you can use it. Okay. So I should have two now. One is... Uh, you can do it in your uh, virtual box now, if you want. It's a similar interface. I uh, uh, removed virtual box. Uh, maybe it's a little bit different. Excuse have... me. Yes. And can you show us how to get our virtual machine, our virtual connected to all kind of Connections, as you said before, yes, that's only I'm, that's or I'm going to, yes, that's I'm going to. or something like that. Yes, that's what I'm going to do now. Uh, you are going to show that yes. uh, through your Kali, okay? Yes. Okay. Yes. I just uh, built my own as a Windows 10. Uh, can I do that as you you do? Yeah, yeah. Just follow me if you all can follow me. Uh, okay. Okay. I will follow you. So I Thank have you. a Kali now. If I click right click settings, it's similar in, uh, in a virtual box as well. 
Uh, let me just make sure I be fair to everybody uh, because last time we download the virtual box. So let me show you virtual uh, where we are first, and then I will show you virtual box. How is that? So uh, you click right click on it because I'm confusing some other classes. <laughs> so when you can uh, come into network, so you have three options I talked about, right? You have bridged, you have net, host only and specific, you can build your own uh, network like this, but we don't go there now. So the first one we talked about was bridged. Let's keep it as, as bridged, right? And then click okay. And then let's boot up this machine. Uh, sorry to interrupt, but uh, where did you get that? Uh, Just by right clicking without opening the uh, virtual machine or after yes. open it? No, before open it, you click settings, right click and settings. Settings, yes. Yes. I didn't find this. Yes. Okay. Settings and then, then the uh, network adapter. Internet. Okay, net connection. Yep. Oops. Okay. Okay. Then from here, select you have a, a bridge connection. Yes, bridge connection. And uh, then your username is Kali. And the yes. password is Kali. Click in. So how do I know? Uh, let's go to my uh, IP address, find out my IP address. So in order IP address, we can say I, if config in my, um, so I have 10.0, 10.213, right? Now it is like a computer I am teaching you. It's like physical, it's because it's bridged, even it's a virtual server inside my computer. It is acting like a computer that is connected to my uh, main modem directly. Let me see my oven, uh, your, my host computer IP address. So this is my Windows machine. So host machine. So hosting is this virtual machine. Right? Oops. So look at my IP, because I have virtual adapter, I had to find my uh, physical uh, adapter. I think this is my Ethernet adapter here, you see? So if you pay attention, uh, I have my physical IP address is this one. What is it? 10, 0, 0, 0, uh, 10, 0, dot 0, dot 0, 168. Look at my IP address here. Uh, they look at the same network, right? Because last, Digit different, but the, the first three digit is network address. It's different. Yes, so yes, same. That same. mean, that mean <clears throat> right now, what this mean is I have, um, I have uh, my host computer, which has inside the virtual machine. I have a router here. I have internet here. Now, Bridget mode, this guy, my uh, my physical computer connected to my router and connected to the internet, right? Now, my virtual server also connected through here to the router, to the internet. Even it's a virtual, but it's bridged. My computer built a bridge to pass through without any problem. So let me, Go to the internet, see if it's real. Let's go to. Can you tell us the comment? So I can't do it because it's Mac. So uh, I, want to, I want to see the same page like this braced stuff. Oh, uh, if you see it's if you're using VMware, it should be same. Same, I mean, same. The, comment is I, same. What comment? The comment I forgot, like I just, I couldn't catch it. What uh, comments? Okay, I, I will uh, show you now. So I can go to internet now from my virtual machine, right? Yeah. So comment, my comment is right now I am in, um, uh, my host machine is here, 
which is host. My this side is guest machine. My colleague is guest. This is a guest machine, which is in a computer inside computer. And uh, if you look at here, well, let me. This is my real computer, right? Yeah. This is how it looks like. This computer is inside my computer as a virtual machine. Yeah, host, um, hosting, hosting, hosting machine and IP is not such a card. I get Windows, uh, uh, Mac address person, uh, with system settings and an IP, or you can just click the, the wireless on the right top corner. Uh, oh. IP address, it should be there. Okay. Or, or it can go to terminal if you open how no open the terminal and then uh, I think Apple takes uh, Unix command Linux commands uh, if if uh, I think it's IP address something like that but um, yeah that is uh, okay so I have host now we have a in Bridget mode let's change my Bridget mode to different mode settings and then network adapter. Let's change it to NAT. NAT is basically uh, or become my host company become router. Let's go change, click OK. Now let's go to my IP again. Let's do, so it needs a little bit more time to get the IP address still, uh, just changing it. Just give it like a minute because it, you're changing the whole uh, network structure of this computer. Let's maybe it's enough now. Let's go copy. It's still not taking it. Let's, oh, it's already get a new IP address. You see, what is my new IP address? Anybody see it? So my new IP address 192.168.88.128. So where did this get this IP address? I want one of you to answer that. How did this get IP address? Where do you get IP address, private IP addresses? Who gives private IP addresses? Anybody remember? What is uh, the service that provides IP address? Yourself. Yourself, Myself, yes. setting your private IP address. Yes, so is there any uh, service called something that- DHPC? Yes, DHCP, DHCP provides yeah. something. Yeah. So DHS, DHCP, DHCP, yes. Yes, DHCP is inside this virtual infrastructure. Let's see the DHCP. You go to edit, you go to preference. Mm -hmm. oh, not, oh, you go to edit, you go to virtual network editor. And it comes to here. Now you see the net, you see? How is DHCP settings here? So it's it has built-in small DHCP server inside here. Look at the uh, address, 192, 168, 88, zero. And then my IP address is similar to this guy. Do you find the connection? So I have this IP address and it's similar to this IP address here, okay? So what happening here is that, what happened here is that my virtual machine is not it. So it cannot go out internet directly. So you got to go to the, DHCP server inside this virtual uh, host and the virtual host will give it IP address. And then it also play as a router and then it goes to the router and it goes to the internet. Mm. The first one is bridge. You don't need that. Bridge is basically connecting the, to your, uh, so the modem or router directly. Now, the third option is uh, host only. And in a net mode, you still can go to internet. Let's check it out. Let's go. Um, 
Yep, you still can go to Google. Now let's change it uh, type to host only. Okay, let's uh, give it a couple minutes, a couple seconds. See, it's net connected now. Your network is disconnected now. Okay. Now it's connected now. Let's check. Now you get different IP address. What do you get? 58, right? Okay. Let's ping, let's go to internet. You can't go to anywhere. You're stuck. See? You basically, you, your network is isolated. So, so if you have another Kali, uh, let me change it uh, settings to network adapter to host only. And then power it up. I can download my uh, Okay, my Kali second Kali is boot up. Let's check its IP address. So what do you see similarity here? You see something similar? The first one, you have a 59, 68, 58. The network uh, ID is a 192, 168, or 58. The IP address is 128. And this one is same, uh, 58, but IP address 129. Let's try to ping, uh, let's try to, if they can communicate each other, 128. So the first thing you need to do, if it's a communicatable, use ping. No, you can't ping anything. You can ping Google, you can ping Microsoft. It's a P-I-N-G, ping uh, 192, 168. Open up your command, command prompt on your Windows. If you do uh, search type, if you're using Windows, CMD, you will have something like this, okay? And then you can ping yahoo.com. It will check if, communicate, try to communicate with Yahoo. So we're gonna ping inside computer uh, in the local net uh, 58.128. See, I can communicate with this, this guy now. Kali 2 can communicate Kali 1, see? Now, if I want to communicate, ping this guy, this guy address is, uh, I forget, 29, what is it? One twenty nine. Let's ping one ninety two, one sixty eight, fifty eight, one two nine. Yeah, they're talking to each other. Let's then talk to and one machine you have building the two regional machine. Yes. All right. Yes. Okay. Now I can ping Yahoo because you are in a box. You are in a host only uh, network. So you cannot ping anything, okay? Let me, uh, yeah, this is a, 
this is all you want to do today on the uh, virtual machine. So uh, try different settings on if you're using uh, VMware, I'm gonna try to do simulate, simulate, ugh, simulate the uh, and virtual box because uh, some of you installed virtual box last time. So I want to go over on the virtual box, okay? Can so, you show us how to copy it? Like I, I just, Oh, I, sure. I, I did all the process using my only one, but I want okay, to Okay, just to right click. Uh, I think it's manage and clone. Okay. Mac, so it's a little bit different. So there's suspense, settings, snapshots, get info, like show windows, show in finder, rename. There's no any other. You don't have a clone. Maybe try to turn off, power off your virtual machine and try it. All right. Yeah. Okay, I'm installing my uh, virtual box. Okay, finished. Uh, okay, I can download my uh, virtual box. Kali virtual machine. Okay. My internet is very fast, so it take maybe less than a minute to download. Maybe not a minute. Uh, seven minutes left. Is it? But <laughs> okay. Yeah, it should be faster than that. So. Um, if you have, so let me check. Uh, so my virtual box is installed. Uh, let me minimize this one. So you, most of you have a two uh, computer last time. I uh, see, so yeah, okay. Um, so what you do is, uh, I don't have virtual machine. That's why I cannot uh, show you now. I'm like, I can create one, new virtual machine. Let's see, uh, Ubuntu. Uh, let's say Windows, Windows one. Windows one. I'm just creating a blank machine. I'm gonna delete this one. So I just want to show where it is, the setting is. So you click, oh no, you right click. Uh, I think it's settings. You can do this one too. And you could do network. So here you how you change it. You bridged, uh, host only, net. So there is a couple uh, option. Uh, I would not, if you read the documentation, you can try those option. But um, most of you in the during the uh, uh, build uh, virtual machine, we have two virtual machine. You have Windows, Kali. So you can uh, on the right click or setting once you select the machine virtual machine guest and you click settings and then you will get a network a tab okay network tab here and then click enable network adapter make sure make sure you adapter enable network adapter if you have wi-fi if you have a two more than one network adapter it will show up here but you can add virtual adapter as well if you want to, but uh, let's uh, stick to one adapter now. So uh, for the sake of so not confusing. So it's on, once you enable, it will be enabled. So first one is enabled. So here, here we display your physical network card. You can use which one you connect directly. So let's keep it as default for now. So you can attach to which, uh, network, we can do net, bridged. So you can do your uh, stick. I have two network now, one is a Wi-Fi, one is a, a cable uh, direct connection. So you can use uh, which one, because I'm not connecting the Wi-Fi now, I'm connecting to uh, gigabyte USB adapter. So if you don't choose it, it might uh, choose the default one, so if you, let's say it just fall into whatever uh, it is and you still can communicate, make sure communicate with internet, make sure you connect the correct uh, adapter, which is your Wi-Fi adapter or network that you connected to cable to uh, pick one because your controller, your network card is basically playing what mode you are in. If you have a bridged mode, it plays a cable, right? Mm -hmm. uh, if you select uh, 
uh, net, your uh, network is, is defaulted to whatever is working. So it doesn't really, it cannot really have a choose on it, I think. And then you have um, host only. You couldn't have much choice on it. So the only thing you can choose is the first one, uh, bridge. You can choose which one because you, which one you want to go to traffic, okay? Sorry to interrupt, but uh, can I ask you something? Because sure. uh, when I choose the bridge uh, adapter, bridge adapter, uh, mm -hmm. it shows a uh, warning that said, do you want to allow your PC to be discoverable by other PCs and devices on this network? Uh, what should we choose? So you see, yes, yes. Or no? yes, make it yes. So make it easier for you to uh, communicate. So, so it's 11 o'clock, uh, class is over. Uh, yeah. If you want stay, stay. Uh, I might stay about like 10, 15 minutes to help you guys. But uh, if you need to go, uh, you need to be free to go. There's no new concept will be speaking after this. I will uh, stop the recording. Um, and then